Hello and welcome to Anthroobias. I am Harsha Mannava. Now, today in this video, we will look at another very important question that students have. So far, we've discussed the nature of anthropology, but students also have a very practical question in mind because none of you are here to get PhDs or other higher degrees in anthropology. All of you are here because you want to take, you want to clear civil service examination and you want to clear the examination with anthropology as a optional. So that begs the question, is anthropology as an optional, is it scoring or not? How does it reward? The answer to this question is simply yes. Anthropology's, anthropology over the last 10 years has been doing exceptionally well. So well that uh, many who are in services and still and seeking betterment and writing exam again for betterment to get into the IAS or IFS are shifting from their previous optionals into anthropology. So, why is anthropology scoring? Anthropology is scoring because one, the subject matter is easy. Two, the subject matter is not just easy, it is familiar. We talk about things like caste system, family, marriage, religion. These are all things which you are already aware of. We are not discussing uh, some complex mathematics or complex physics. These are institutions or practices that we live with. So, the subject matter is familiar. Second, it is easy. Third, in examination, questions repeat. Anthropology has been doing well because quite often the questions are repetitive. So, if a student does good work by covering all the areas of syllabus and has good content for every topic in the syllabus and has done a good job of covering all the previous questions and trying to write answers for previous questions and for topics where there is no content, they have made the effort to find content and organize everything, then anthropology becomes an easy road to success because questions tend to repeat. In fact, in this year's examination, in the Civil Service Examination 2022, in paper 2, almost 17 questions came from my test series, came from the test series we conducted for mains appearing students. So, the questions repeat and those who are able to plan their preparation well and those who are able to study the good previous questions thoroughly are doing well. So, easy subject matter, familiar content, repetitive questions. That, that's what makes anthropology easy. And fourth, in a place like Hyderabad, where I am based, anthropology has one of the best ecosystems in the country. Anthropology has traditionally been a Hyderabad based optional. Other social science optionals have traditionally evolved in, a, in Delhi, but anthropology has traditionally evolved in Hyderabad. So in Hyderabad, there is vast, good, high quality teaching. You have access to materials, very good materials. You have access to test series, mentorship. You have access to a peer group. In Hyderabad, you will notice that majority are writing with anthropology. So being in Hyderabad gives you a peculiar advantage, a unique advantage in terms of uh, providing access to the best anthropology ecosystem that exists in the whole country. For any other optional, perhaps in Delhi, you will have a better structures. But for anthropology, the scenario is reverse. Hyderabad offers better ecosystem. That's another reason. But now, let us talk in numbers. So this is the data that is uh, given in the recent, in the latest UPSC's annual report. There, if you closely notice, they've given us some data on the performance of various optionals. They've given us data on the performance of various optionals. So here you have different optional subjects. Here you have in this column, number of candidates who appeared in the main examination. And here is the data on number of candidates who finally got selected. And here you have the success rate of the optional. And this data is for civil service examination 2019, because they have given, uh, this only the ex data of 2019 examination is out in the public domain. The later examinations data is still not put out by the commission. So what does this data tell us? If you notice, among the main op major optionals, a major optional is at least one where there are a few hundreds, at least 400 or so candidates writing. Among those, anthropology has one of the highest success rates. For instance, if you take agriculture, or if you take animal husbandry, it seems like it has very high success rate, 20%. But that is misleading because only 16 wrote with animal husbandry. 
compared to let's say 2000 with geography. So such optionals we cannot judge their success, we cannot retake their success rate on the face value. Next, so if you look at major optionals which have good numbers, what are they? Anthropology has about 1200 people writing with anthropology. Geography has the highest of any optional 2000 and you have history 751, we also have mathematics 539, political science 1662, you have psychology, no, PubAd, public administration another 705 and if you look at the success rates, geography you will be surprised to find has a success rate of only 5.5 percent whereas anthropology has a success rate of 9.1 percent history success rate is also 6.8 only. So, geography is 5.5, history is 6.8, mathematics is 8.3, political science, physics is 7.3, political science is 8.2, public administration is 8.2, anthropology is 9.1. So, it has the highest success rate for optionals which have significant numbers. It is even beating maths many think maths offers high success, but here anthropology is success rate is higher than maths. And let us also look at scores, even the top scores are also being received by students of anthropology. For example, in 2021 the top mark was 306, this year the highest in optional in maths is 320, whereas in anthropology it was 306, many other optionals had only 280s and 90s. In 2022, the first rank went to a student with anthropology optional and he got 320 whereas maths also was 320 that year. Then in 2018, a student got 45th rank and she got 362 that year, that is the highest score for any optional in the entire examination. Then in 2018 again, the second ranker got 335, in 2017, again the first ranker got 318, in 2017, the sixth ranker, all these two are Telugu students, both got, Anudip got first rank, Koya Sri Hashi got sixth rank and they got 318, 338 each and in the same year, the third ranker got 339 with anthropology. So, if you notice, many toppers, first 1, 2, 3, 6, so these toppers with these kind of ranks are also choosing anthropology and of these, some have shifted from other optionals to anthropology. For example, Anudip, he was in his fifth attempt when he got rank and he was already in IRS by that time and he shifted from public administration to anthropology in his fifth attempt. Lakshmi Nagappan shifted from sociology to anthropology in her higher attempts. So, what do you make out of this? If toppers are shifting from other optionals to anthropology, it means that they have realized because a fresher may not know how to decide on an optional, but somebody who is in the examination field for and has given a couple of attempts has a better understanding of which optional is working and if seniors and those who are rankers already are choosing anthropology and leaving the previous optionals and shifting to anthropology, then surely something is working for anthropology. That should tell you that anthropology is indeed doing quite well and it is an optional on which you can rely on for consistent results. Because remember, in general studies, it is very difficult to predict the outcome. If the syllabus is quite vast and we do not know Questions can come from any part of the syllabus, sometimes question can be so out of syllabus as well and we cannot do anything about it. So in GS, we cannot predict the outcome, but in anthropology, if you work hard and if you have done good job, it is safe optional. You can expect questions if you have thoroughly prepared and if you thoroughly prepared, you are sure that you will get a good score and as you know already, in the examination, optional plays a very key role. All the toppers are getting top ranks not because they got high scores in GS. Most of them are landing in high ranks because they are getting high scores in optional. In GS, every candidate gets more or less the same marks. It is in optional that those who perform well are ending up in the list. And anthropology provides a safe optional. If your optional is also like GS, where there are the paper is full of surprises, then you are up for double shock. You have to struggle with GS anyway and optional also is like GS. But anthropology is somehow not like that. In a uh, very disturbed, in a very uncertain territory that is examination like this, anthropology offers you some kind of predictability, where if you prepare well, you have a set of questions which come and you can have, you can expect 
top scores in anthropology by preparing well. So having an optional like this makes it easy for you to prepare for GS because you know that you have prepared anthropology well and hence the score is assured. Now that gives you a lot of emotional depth to handle the uncertainty and vastness of GS. So perhaps that's the reason many toppers are increasingly preferring anthropology and I would think, I would find there is no reason for this to change in the near future. So anthropology as things stand today is a very good optional from rank, result and outcome point of view.